Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I actually originally had a completely different idea for this week's video. I wanted to do a part two to the tie-dye with me video that I did a little while ago, but unfortunately when I got to the store to pick up some tie-dyeing materials, there was absolutely nothing there because apparently everyone else on the planet is also tie-dyeing right now. So I kind of just had to come up with a plan B for this week's video and since I was already in the arts and crafts kind of area of the store, I decided to pick up a little canvas, an easel, and some paints and paintbrushes and now I'm gonna try to recreate a Bob Ross painting because honestly who doesn't love some happy little trees? I myself would die for Bob Ross. He was an incredibly wholesome human being and if you haven't watched any of the Joy of Painting videos that are on YouTube you should absolutely go and do that because they are the most mesmerizing videos I've ever watched in my entire life. I honestly don't expect this painting to go well at all because the last time I tried painting with oil paints was probably early high school. I know we had to use oil paints at some point during my art class, but we only did it probably once or twice, and I definitely haven't used them in a very long time. But as Bob Ross would say, there are no mistakes, just happy little accidents. So if anything goes wrong, I can just pretend it was intentional. Now I should probably also mention that I don't have any liquid white, which is what Bob Ross always starts with on his canvas, so I'm gonna attempt to make it myself. And since I don't have any linseed oil or any paint thinners of any kind, which are what you're supposed to use, I'm just gonna use some olive oil, which is probably a terrible idea, but guess what? There are no mistakes, just happy accidents. So we're just gonna use some olive oil to thin out my white paint to cover the canvas, and we're just gonna see what happens. All right, that actually went much better than anticipated. I think it actually worked pretty well, but I'm not gonna know for sure until I start painting and it either completely destroys the entire painting or it works. So I have the entire canvas coated in a thin layer of what you could maybe call liquid white, but is basically just a little bit of white oil paint mixed with some olive oil. And I moved my canvas over a little bit on the easel so I had room to set my phone so I can watch the video as I'm going. I'm completely aware that that's a terrible idea and my phone is either gonna get covered in oil paint or fall off the edge of the easel, but honestly, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. So my canvas is all prepped, I'm gonna get my brushes and my paints ready, and then we're gonna get started. Hello, I'm Bob Ross. Hi, Bob. And I'd like to welcome you to the 14th Joy of Painting series. First of all, I'd like to thank you for inviting me back for another series of painting shows. He's so wholesome. If this is your wholesome. first time with us, then let me extend a personal invitation I love to get him. out your brushes and paint along. Now. I've already covered the canvas with a nice thin even coat of liquid white. I'm the way ahead of you, Bob. liquid white just makes the canvas wet and slick. So I tell you what, let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen. Alright, I don't have the actual Bob Ross set of paints because I am cheap and I only had a few minutes to find what I needed to make this video. So I'm not going to have the exact same colors that Bob Ross has, but I'm going to try my best to match all of the colors that he uses to the best of my ability with what I have. Now, let's start right up at the top and we use little crisscross strokes just making little X's and go all the way across the top. All right, Bob, I don't have that color, but I'm gonna try my best. Okay, that is a, oh, that's such a pretty blue. Oh my gosh, I don't think you can see it on camera, but that is very nice. Alright, well I can already tell you that my brushes are much cheaper than Bob Ross's, which is to be expected because he is a very good artist. But because my brushes are so cheap, there are a ton of brush strokes and brush hairs in my sky, but we're just gonna pretend that they're meant to be there. Let's continue, Bob. Alright, let's back it up a little bit, Bob. I was still in the blending process, so I don't know what you did just then. Now maybe, maybe we'll have a little water in this painting. So start from the outside and pull inward. Pull it across, like so. Pull across, there we go. Like I said, my brushes are falling apart, as you can tell by the giant hair sticking out of my paint, but we're trying our best and I think Bob would be proud. Well, as you can tell, this canvas is also very cheap and not the most sturdy thing in the world. I'm definitely second guessing having my phone sitting on the easel because it just slammed to the ground and it's brand new, but it's all good, it didn't crack. We got lucky this time and honestly, I don't know where else I could set it where I can still watch it while I'm painting, so I guess we're just gonna leave it there and hope for the best.
I don't want to speak too soon, but this honestly isn't looking so bad other than the 20,000 brush hairs in it. I just shake the brush into the box and, <laughs> and beat the devil out of it. Now with a nice clean dry brush. All right, Bob, bold of you to assume that I have a nice clean dry brush. So we're just going to keep using this brush, which has blue on it. And I know we're supposed to be blending, but you know what? We're working with what we've got. I just picked up the fan brush, so let's try that. Load a lot of the titanium white into it. It's a very firm paint. And use just the corner of the brush and just make little circles. Just happy little circles. Okay, this is where I start to get a little more stressed because you can definitely mess things up a little bit easier once you start doing details like this. But Bob would want me to have a good time and not be stressed, so I'm just gonna paint some happy little clouds. All right, well, this is where I start to realize that mixing paint with olive oil definitely does not work as well as I thought it would. I'm trying to put some happy little clouds on top of my sky and that is not really working because the bottom layer that I have is too thin and instead of putting paint on top of it, it's just kind of smearing around. I think the best chance I have of actually being able to make happy little clouds is probably gonna be to take a little bit of paper towel and try to remove some of the paint underneath where I want the clouds to be, so we're gonna try that. Okay, we're definitely getting a little bit more cloud now. Still kind of mixing in with the blue, but I think we're making progress. Well, we've definitely lesson for future reference not to use so much oil on the bottom layer because then nothing will go on top of it but you know what you learn as you go all right well I think this is the closest we're gonna get to happy little clouds so let's move on we'll take just the top corner and we're gonna blend the base of the clouds out tiny little circles using just the top corner of the brush then grab it and fluff it tease it I'm not gonna lie Bob if I fluff my clouds I'm pretty sure they're gonna disappear All right, never mind, Bob. My clouds have completely transformed and they actually look like clouds, so I'm sorry that I ever lost faith in you. The main thing we're looking for here is a good dark color. Pull it out as flat as you can get it. Just really, really exert some force. Go straight down with a the knife. There, cut across. All right, Bob, I'm just gonna hope that my cheap plastic palette knife from Walmart is up for the challenge, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm not very optimistic. And we get a tiny roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. All right, slow down, Bob. I don't have my roll of paint yet. All right, well, this color is definitely a little more purple than intended, but you know what? Sometimes you just need to roll with the purple mountain. All right, Bob, I've got my roll of paint. Let's do this. This is where you have to make a big decision. I don't what like big decisions. Live? Maybe in our world, our mountain's gonna live. It does now, right there. Now, we'll take our two inch brush and we wanna grab it and pull it. I'm still applying a great deal of pressure here. Grab it, pull firmly downward. All right, hang on, Bob. I'm still making mountains. My mountains definitely have more peaks than his did, but you know what? This is my world, and in my world, maybe my mountain has lots of peaks. I think Bob would be proud of me for making my own big decisions. All right, Bob, I think I'm all caught up now, so let's back it up a little bit and see what you're doing. Now, we'll take our two inch brush and we wanna grab it and pull it. I'm still applying a great deal of pressure here. Grab it, pull firmly downward. 
That helps create that illusion of mist at the base of your mountain. All right, well, this definitely isn't the technique that Bob used, but he just got done saying that there's no cheating in art, and if it works for you, then it's awesome. And you know what? This is what's gonna work because my paintbrushes are very cheap and I can't blend. All right, I think that's as good as the mountains are gonna get, so what's next, Bobby boy? Then we'll take this titanium white, pull it out flat, take a cut across, and once again, our small roll of paint. It's so important to load that knife correctly. Go right up here, touch. No pressure, no pressure. All right, this there. seems very easy Let to mess up. Float. Listen, this breaking in here, the holes left. Bob, out. I'm stressed, help me. The other problem that people experience a great deal is they use a paint that's too thin. If you use a thin paint, it's just gonna turn to mud. And then Bob, it's turning to mud. And I really, I really want this to work for you. Get a paint that's very dry and very firm. That's most Bob, this is the only paint I have. It is not firm enough. Now, before we get too far along, get carried away here. Let's put a little shadow now. Just take a little bit of the, a little bit of blue, a little blue, a little white. All right, hang on, Bob. I'm still doing the highlights. All right, don't give up on me yet, Bob. I'm making it happen. I know it's a little muddy, but we're making it work. All right, I'm all caught up. What are you doing? Set our opposing direction from the highlight. Now maybe right up in here. There, see there? Isn't that fantastic that you can build a mountain that easy? And you really can. All right, Bob, I've got my color for my shadows. I'm catching up, I'm getting there. The highlights didn't go nearly as well as expected, so we're just gonna hope the shadows do a little bit better than the highlights did. All right, well, this definitely doesn't look like Bob's, but I think I made the mountains look somewhat presentable, so we're just gonna move on. Make sure your brush is good and dry, and now we wanna help create that illusion of mist down here. All we're doing is tapping, just tapping, following the angles and lifting upward. All right, well, I'm pretty sure I'm about to destroy all of the work I just did, but I've lost my trust in Bob once before, and he did not betray me, so I'm gonna not lose my trust in him this time, and I'm gonna do as he tells me. I'm not entirely sure if he's gonna fill this white space up here, but I feel like I need to bring my water up a little bit so that I don't just have white space between the mountains and the water. I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not, but once I add trees, there's really no going back, so I'm gonna do that. All right, we fixed the water line, so now it's time for some happy little trees. All right, I'm definitely starting to get behind, but now Bob Ross wants me to just pull the trees down, which could end horribly. See, the problem here is that Bob Ross makes everything look extremely easy. I'm also not sure why he left a little gap over here, but I'm gonna leave it too because I figure there's probably a reason for it eventually. Like I said though, I just need to trust Bob Ross and assume that he knows what he's doing because I certainly don't. Well, this water line is certainly not the best thing I've ever seen in my life, but we're just gonna trust the Bob Ross method and I'm gonna hope that it gets better as we go on. So I'm gonna go into, we'll take a little yellow, reach up here, get a little 
sap green, load the brush full of color, a lot of color. Go right back up here. Maybe back in here there's some little grassy areas that live. Just take, give it a little upward push, bend the bristles, push upward. See there? There. And we can make just the indication of some little grassy things that live back here in the distance. Maybe at some point I should do a video of me attempting to recreate a Bob Ross tutorial but without the ability to pause the video because I'm telling you right now if I was not able to pause this video Bob Ross would have already been done with five paintings by the time I was done with this one. Alright, there's our grassy area. Let's back up a little bit because Bob got ahead of me and what are you doing now? Let's take our knife touch of the liquid white. I'm going to put it on the canvas or on the palette. All right, Bob, I had to make some room on my palette because I am a messy, messy painter and ran out of room, but I've got my white. There we go. I cut across it like that. Let's go right up here. And with that, let's just cut in the indication of a little water line. Maybe in our world, there lives a big evergreen tree. Just start off with Okay, that the is canvas. a big decision to make. the corner of the brush. And just sort of let this work. Back I don't know if I'm quite ready for this kind of commitment, Bob. Yeah. I don't know. Once again, you can do this very nicely with a one or two inch brush, bringing it to a chisel edge. Bob, this it is stressful. I don't know little, that I'm ready for this. a dirty fan brush, so I thought I'd use it today. There. But it's up to you. Totally, totally up to you. All right, Bob does not care if I'm ready. Bob does not care if I'm ready because the world goes on, so I just need to be ready all by myself and I need to make this happy little tree. Alright, I'd say that's a pretty sufficient happy tree. I know Bob did three of them, but he also made his smaller and a lot closer together. And since I have the artistic license to say that I don't want to do that, I'm not going to do it. If things start to feel a little too empty over there later in the painting, maybe I'll add in another one. But for right now, I think that's good. Pull the brush in one direction, one direction through the paint. By pulling it in one direction, it'll round one corner rounded corner we want to the top. Take with the rounded corner up, give it a little push. And watch here, see when you push, look at all those little leaves and grass indications and bush indications it makes just automatically. There we go. Now turn the brush to create shape. All right, well I've come to the conclusion that this brush is basically useless, so I'm gonna go get another one. Alright, I definitely didn't really have a brush that worked for what he was doing with the ground down here, but we're just gonna pretend that looks like what he did and now we're gonna start highlighting some trees. All right, Bob, I've got my yellowish greenish color. What are we going to highlight? Here, pick out individual bushes and stuff and trees, okay? Give a little push, gentle. It does not, does not take a hard hit. If you've loaded the brush correctly with a nice thin paint, then all you have to do is just touch and it won't turn to mud on you.
maybe, in our world here. There's a big old trout lives out here. You gotta have a way to go get him. So let's build us a little path. And for that, we'll take the knife, a little touch of Van Dyke Brown, pull it out very flat, cut across, and our little roll of paint again. Always that little roll of paint. And go right up here, you have to make a big decision now. Where's your path live? Maybe it comes right around, and all I'm doing is just applying some brown paint to put the general basic shape of the path in. Okay, well this path definitely doesn't look like it belongs and it sticks out a little bit, but I'm just gonna hope that Bob can explain to me how to fix that. A few moments later. Alright, well at this point it looks like Bob is basically done with his painting, so I'm gonna try to do some damage control with mine and see if I can kind of make things look a little bit better before we finish this whole thing off. Alright, so as you can see, I kind of took it upon myself to just completely remove the path from the painting because I couldn't get it to look right. So I basically just added a bunch of highlights and shadows to the grass to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional instead of just a flat little hill thing. And honestly, I think that's basically it. So this is my finished product. I'm not sure exactly how well you'll be able to see it on camera, but I'll insert a more close-up picture of it at some point, somewhere. I don't even know. Maybe it'll just be at the end of the video. Maybe I'll do a side-by-side -side once I stop talking here and do my outro of my painting versus Bob Ross's painting. Obviously, they're not gonna look exactly the same, first of all, because I am nowhere near as talented as Bob Ross, and second of all, because I took it upon myself to change a few things that I didn't think looked right on my painting, so they're definitely going to be a little bit different, and I also didn't have all the same supplies and brushes that he had, so there's definitely going to be some variation, but I'll do a comparison at the end of the video once I finish my outro of my painting and Bob's painting. I also have an extra canvas since I bought them in a pack of two, because for some reason they didn't just have single canvases at the store, so if you want me to try to recreate another one of Bob Ross's paintings, or honestly anyone else, but I prefer Bob Ross because he is an absolute legend, so if you want to see me do that, just let me know in the comments. But I think that's it for this video, so if you guys liked it, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below to become a Toridactyl, and leave me a comment letting me know what I should do for future videos. As always, I'll leave the links to my social medias in the description below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!